All right, Sandra, back now to our top story and the growing calls for transparency in the investigation into the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic. Senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, David Asher, joins us now. He is a former State Department official who led a probe into the pandemic under former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. David, good to see you. Just to set this up for the folks at home, this is the investigation that we were reporting on yesterday that was shut down in the spring by the Biden administration. You left that investigation about the end of January or so. What was that investigation finding? Well, we were finding that uh, despite the claims of our scientific community, uh, including the National Institutes of Health and Dr. Fauci's NIAID uh, organization, that there was almost no evidence that supported a natural zoonotic uh, 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 you know, evolution or uh, source of COVID-19. I, I, I came into an investigation uh, doing a compliance report related to the bioweapons treaty. And we said, you know, okay, let's look at the both, 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 both sources of evidence, natural uh, zoonosis, as they call it, you know, it came out of nature or did it come out of a lab? And, uh, the data disproportionately stacked up as we investigated that it was coming out of a, a lab or some supernatural source. But but at that point in time, the person who was overseeing this, the Undersecretary for Nonproliferation, Chris Ford, you say didn't really want to entertain this idea? No, no, he, he seemed uh, disinterested. He said, even if we uh, came to it, how do we know where it came out of what lab? I, I, I very rarely in my in my life in government have ever encountered someone who's more of a negocrat, uh, less a bureaucrat than that individual. Uh, uh, I, I, I rarely say that I encountered disgraceful behavior in government, but uh, I did actually on this occasion. Now, now you say very, strange, very bizarre. You, you you say that you were looking into compliance in terms of. Uh, weapons of mass destruction, arms control. Was there a military component to this? Of course. I mean, we were trying to assess the entire biological weapons program of China. And uh, I have a background in biotech investing. And that's why I came back as a contractor, because I couldn't afford to uh, come back in the government as a regular official uh, this last time. Uh, but I still had an official capacity, more or less. And I, I know I knew a lot about synthetic biology, and I, 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 I rapidly zeroed in on the Wuhan Institute of Virology, not just because of the Secretary of State's previous uh, statements about it, but because that was the center or the epicenter of synthetic biology in the People's mm -hmm. Republic of China, and uh, they were up to some very hairy stuff with synthetic biology and so-called gain-of-function techniques. So what do you believe through the intelligence that you gathered, your task force gathered, that the Chinese were doing at that institute when it comes to coronavirus? Well, they were doing a, a, a wide variety of things. It's interesting, until 2015, the Chinese, uh, as members of the Biological Weapons Convention, declared that they were engaged in coronavirus-related research. And then in 2016, they stopped declaring that. For, and this was for biodefense purposes, ostensibly. So why did they stop declaring it? Well, as we uh, unveiled in our uh, declassified statement from the Secretary of State and mm -hmm. DNI on January 15th, they had kicked off in 2016 at the exact same time a classified program involving the People's Liberation Army into coronaviruses with a uh, biological uh, weapons element uh, uh, obviously present. Now, Dr. Fauci has maintained from the NIH that American money was not used to fund gain-of-function research at Wuhan. Uh, you suggested that they were involved in gain-of-function research there at that laboratory. Did you find anything to connect the dots between NIH funding and what was going on at the lab? Yeah, you know, I mean, I wasn't involved in, in uh, researching the Chinese, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the U.S. government's uh, involvement in gain-of-function research. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the Chinese government's. But via looking at the Chinese side of this, uh, the Chinese most certainly felt that NIH was supporting their gain-of-function research into enha enhancing the pathogenicity or uh, the, the, the virulence of uh, coronavirus uh, vectors that were radically unnatural. They were not similar to anything that resembled what could occur in natural evolution. In fact, I had biostatisticians at one of our national labs 
calculate the odds of this evolving in nature, and it was like one in 13 million, wow. and then they later revised it to about one in 13 billion. Oh my God. So, you know, to say this came out of a zoonotic uh, situation is sort of ridiculous. So just very and, quickly, because I've only got a, a few seconds left here, David, uh, when all is said and done with this 90-day review by the intelligence committee, uh, community, what do you believe they'll find? What do you think they'll conclude? I have a lot of confidence in the intelligence community at this stage. I think they finally got their heads around this situation. I think they'll find a lot. Whether they'll say much is a different matter. We made a big effort under Secretary Pompeo's leadership to declassify critical information. I uh, certainly hope, and I know the Congress endorses this uh, bipartisanly, that this administration will do the same. All we right. need to find out the truth for the sake of our future and humanity. We'll see where this goes, and we'll keep watching it. David Asher, good to see you again. It's been a while. Thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank